Hey, Roger community. Today, we're going to revisit my front loader NES. If you recall from my February pickups video, I picked up a copy of Rad Racer, and I just couldn't get it to work on the Retro NHD. So I tried it on the front loader, and well, as you can see, there are some graphical glitches. I uh, think it might be something wrong with the cart. I randomly grabbed another one, Dr. Mario in this case, only to find out that it too has some garbled graphics, as you can see. Now, I did take Dr. Mario and put it back into the Retro NHD, and it seemed to work fine. So, is there something wrong with both the Rad Racer and my NES? Well, no, it turns out it's just the NES. Uh, a lot of games don't seem to work right on clone consoles. The uh, NES on that chip isn't perfect. And Rad Racer is specifically one of the games that does not work right on them. Uh, a lot of games that use custom mapper chips and things like that, especially if they use the MMC3 mapper chip. In my case, Rad Racer, as well as Rad Racer 2, are known to be incompatible. Uh, it turns out uh, another game that I have uh, that I picked up recently, Bad Dudes, doesn't work either. So, yeah, um, chances are the cart's fine. It's just that the NES has issues. So what's going on? Why am I seeing these glitches? Well, the most common causes of this are A, a bad cartridge connector, B, bad power supply, C, bad capacitors or resistors, D, bad VRAM, or E, a bad PPU, otherwise known as the picture processing unit. I was able to eliminate the cart connector by purchasing a new one. I don't have any footage of it, but I tried it and it didn't seem to make a difference anyway. So I also tried uh, a few different known good power supplies that I have on hand, and they too didn't yield any different result. Now, with regards to capacitors and resistors, while it's not recommended to do so, I did test them while they were installed. Uh, I know that that can throw off some of the values, but they seem to register close enough to what their listed values are that I was able to eliminate that as a possible cause, with the exception of a couple of resistors, R7 and R8. They were giving me really strange readings, so I removed them, and they ended up testing just fine. Replaced them anyway. Turns out those two resistors are known to show different values when they're in line in the circuit than when they're out of the circuit. Can't find the link to the forum post where I found it initially, but if I do, I'll update the description below with a link to that. So the next possibility is the VRAM, and it's just a standard SRAM chip. And surprisingly, you can still get these things brand new. I don't know if it's new old stock or if they're still actually manufacturing them, but I was able to procure one. For a good price, so I figured, ah, we'll give it a shot. So in the uh, next footage here, you can see that I am uh, desoldering the old chip, installing a new socket, and socketing the new memory chip. So let's take a look and see if it fixed anything. So I was finally able to find a uh, suitable replacement VRAM for a decent price. Um, not sure what brand this is, but. This uh, Motorola chip here should work just fine. It is the MCM2018AN45. And uh, some NES models that come with that installed. Of course, what I'm going to have to do is desolder this memory chip here. I'm going to install a socket so that it, it, will, be, it will be easier to replace in the future in the event that needs to happen. Or in the event that this isn't the issue, I could put the original one back in and keep this as a spare or even for the uh, VRAM itself or SRAM, I mean. So I've already gone ahead and marked off where I need to remove the chip from. However, I do need to remove the cartridge connector to make it easier to get to. All right, let's just apply a ton of flux. I'm not using the pen this time because I want to get a lot more on. Iron's at a good temperature, so let's just apply some fresh solder, and then we can go and desolder. All right, let's get to this here. Go 
back over to this first pin here. Apply a fresh dab of solder and then try to remove it again because I don't think I got all of it out. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that these are absolutely 100% desoldered and free to go. I mean, as you can see, the chip is still in there and I can even try to, you know, wiggle out it and it won't come out. So, a couple of different things you can do when you have a situation like this. One is you can sit there with a uh, your soldering iron and some tweezers to kind of wiggle the pin loose somewhat and hope that it doesn't re-stick uh, to the solder. You can also use a desoldering braid to try to get the rest of it out. Third method is to take a heat gun and then just slowly go over and heat it up. You can always tape off areas you don't want to expose the heat and then the chip will, in theory, just fall out. So but I'm going to grab some tweezers first and jiggle the legs just in case. That moves freely. Not so much. Not so much. So most of these are probably not going to move very freely. And we can try using heat to see. We can try to quickly heat it up and then... really moves. This half does not, but there is some solder. It looks like it leaked through the other side. Wonder. If using some solder wick will help any. Fortunately, with the NES, let's say you do rip a trace on one of these smaller chips or what have you. The NES was designed to take a larger size chip as well, and you can see the this extra row of feet here. They're all connected, so in the event you did rip a trace, you could always bodge it that way. Of course, try not to do that, but if you do, it's not the end of the world. And there we go. Not bad at all. So what I will do now is I'm going to add a little bit more... Actually, what I'll do is I'll clean the area off and I'll add some fresh flux. And then we'll put the socket in, new chip, test it all out. Actually, what we'll do is we'll put the socket in first. Applying flux to the pins in the socket will make it easier. Now the silk screen has a little notch imprinted right here, and if you remember the old chip, it had a notch on its end too, pointing that way. And in case you're not sure, the accompanying SRAM is in the same direction. In fact, it looks like every chip on here uh, has its notch towards the well, I guess in this case, it would be the left of the board. And just to hold it in place until I can get at least a couple of the pins down, apply a little bit of capped on tape just to hold it down. So now we'll do a little bit of flux. get this pin and this one there that's not going anywhere 
All right, let's get the rest of this done. Yeah. Looks good to me. Uh, let me touch this one pin up here. Yeah, looks good to me. Not sure if anyone here sees anything wrong. All right, clean that area off again. Removing the excess flux. Not that it should matter, but you know. Okay, one socket installed for new VRAM. Now this Motorola chip does not have a notch on it. But it does have this little dot at pin 1, so that's going to be the equivalent of having a notch. So we'll just go ahead and line this up. Looks good to me if the camera would not be blurry. There. So now I'm going to go ahead and hook up just the bare minimum components, get it connected, see if that weird VRAM video glitch is uh, taken care of. If not, then unfortunately and more than likely the issue is going to be with the PPU. These are not very common to find and any ones that exist out there are not exactly cheap. I mean, it could always be the 74 Logic chip, but more than likely it'll be that if it's not the memory. So I'm really hoping it's the memory. Let me get everything set up. Okay, so I've got the TV hooked up and I'm going to give a test. Uh, we're going to test out Rad Racer since that's the one that initially led me to conclude that there's something wrong. So far, so good. And there's still some corruption. Bummer. Well, just to be on the safe side, in case this is a just a bad copy of Red Racer, let's try Dr. Mario again, because I also noticed some corruption on there, if you remember before. Yeah, it's still bad. So it's probably the PPU. I'm going to keep looking. Maybe I can find a, uh, an affordable PPU out there. Uh, but more than likely, I'm going to have to relegate this to a spare parts system and find another one for repair. Oddly enough, there is no graphic corruption in this game. Or uh, I just, I don't know. Yeah, nothing at all. So, bummer. And unfortunately, it didn't seem to make any difference. And I'm getting the exact same result as I did before. So uh, I ended up just taking the new chip out, putting the old one back in since it still works. And I'll keep the new chip as a spare part in case I need it in the future. But I still have this issue, and that kind of leaves me with two possibilities. I can either try to recap everything since... The NES is an older system, and even though the capacitors in here are good, maybe they're drying out, even if they're testing right. So I can always give that a shot. If that doesn't fix it, though, then the other option is the PPU. Now, these things are becoming harder and harder to come by. In fact, as of the recording of this video, eBay only shows two of them of the RP2 CO2 chips, and they're not cheap. Now, there are a bunch of different variants of this chip, including some clones out there. They're not cheap either, and I don't know if I want to trust the clones necessarily, although other people have had good luck with them. So not sure uh, if I'll be able to do that or not. I may have to look for one of these four parts or four repair NESs and rip one out of there, and then obviously keep the rest for spare parts in case I need them. But I'd also hate to do that just to take one chip out, but because this chip is so rare, I might have to go that route. So, yeah, for now, I think I'm just going to have to call this part one of, I don't know how many videos, 
Um, like I said, I could try recapping it and I may have to go that route. And if I do, I'll release an updated video. I'll also do the same in the event that I do find a new PPU or replacement, I should say, and go from there. Other than that, that's it for this video. If you guys uh, have any questions, go ahead and ask them below. Also, if you have any suggestions or tips, feel free to leave them down below and let me know and I'll see if I can give them a shot. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up. And if you have not yet subscribed, feel free to do so. Although, as usual, never any obligation. And if you didn't like the video, hit the thumbs down, but please leave a comment below as to why so I could try to use that to help improve things going forward. Thanks all, and I'll catch you later.